Hi, I'm April Hugh. I'm with Century 21 Hometown Realty. And I'm Miko Neiman, and I'm also with Century 21 Hometown Realty. And we have a special guest today, Tony Weldon. He's a local appraiser. He's been doing appraisals in the area forever. Long time. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Tony. I've been appraising real estate for 28 years. Wow. Um, I think I should be able to retire, but... No, you can't retire reason, till we do. For some reason, that <laughs> just hasn't happened yet. Um, I pretty much cover uh, northern Santa Barbara County, okay. southern San Luis Obispo County. Okay. I don't like to spend all my time driving, so that seems to be about a good coverage area for me. Right. Fantastic. So, um, the whole process when a buyer is getting a loan, one of the steps is is they the lender um, requests an appraisal and it goes through a third party company, but it didn't always be like that. It used to no, be it didn't. right. Uh, appraisals used to be ordered and controlled uh, by the loan officer right. uh, or the or the or the manager of the office. Uh, Two thousand nine changed everything for us uh, when the financial crisis hit. Um, a lot of people were asking about what happened. And um, what's always been strange to me, obviously I'm biased, I'm an appraiser, but uh, it seemed to me that the loan products out at the time had a lot to do with it. Um, mm -hmm. and, they, and they did away with those. With the stated um, income you're talking the about back income, then. The 100%, right. Right. you know, say what you make. Um, that drove our market like crazy. Um, but they came maybe a little more to the conclusion that uh, loan officers and appraisers were talking too much, and they felt that uh, that shouldn't be happening. So might be a little bias going. Might be a little bias going on, and and um, uh, so 2009 they they created uh, legislation. Uh, it's called Dodd Frank, right, okay. uh, I believe, by two congressmen, and um, that changed pretty much the way we do everything. Um, appraisals, most of the appraisals now are ordered by some kind of a third party vendor. Right. Um, appraisal management companies, we call them AMCs, mm -hmm. they probably cover the majority of appraisals ordered. Now having said that, there are still lenders that can order appraisals without an AMC, but they have to follow very strict guidelines. Mm -hmm. Most of them have to have dedicated staff, and that's all they do is they're the go-between. So it's like an internal uh, system that they have in place it within is. their corporation or company that can yeah, actually deal with the appraisal ordering. And, uh, yeah. there's, there's still the no only ones that you can talk to as an appraiser. Right. There's still there's no talking to the loan officer. Most loan officers don't even know who the appraiser is until they get the report. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we come across that like who is sure. it? Well, and then. Uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, appraisers that are coming up from other areas that we, you know, we don't oh, know. No. Yeah, and so then yeah. it becomes a challenge for us as realtors to make sure that we have available information like the good old days and not very many people do that anymore. Yeah, the, the, you know? the AMC model, um, now they're all different, um, but a lot of the AMC model is... Um, who can do it the cheapest and the fastest. Okay. That's so good. yeah, you, that's going to make, uh, they're going to put those emails out. Sometimes they'll send them out to everybody. 80 appraisers may, may really? get a, may get a little email blast that and this, you have to grab it? that this appraisal is available. Okay. Um, sometimes they ask you to bid. Uh, sometimes they'll tell you what they're going to pay, but uh, it's definitely, I think it's changed the, the quality of what's you know going on in our appraisal world and not for the better I would say so now with that with these email blasts because of our market right now our current conditions with just mm -hmm. um, the volume of properties and the refis and all of that I know appraisers are getting you know backed up and they are super busy so you know how does that with with our current I mean what are the challenges you're facing to in today's market with the appraisal process. Well, just the sheer, just the sheer numbers of appraisals that are being ordered are definitely a challenge. Um, I'm just a one person office, right. okay. so it's pretty limited what I can do. And that's, and that's another reason why I think you're going to see uh, a little more of an out of, out, out of town draw. Mm -hmm. A lot of these um, 
you know, Ventura, Los Angeles areas have uh, multiple staff and they can do reports fairly quickly. Uh, the only problem is a lot of them don't seem to be really educated on our little on our little neighborhoods. Right. Right. Nope. I think it's kind of detrimental when you get someone from out of the area. Oh, I think you're better off, obviously, what else am I going to say, but I think you're better off to, go, to, to stay local, Definitely. you know, any, any chance you can. If you, if you can. Can't, can't you, uh, when you get, a, a, the listing agent gets the call from the appraiser usually to go appraise a property, and I, I was told that that listing agent can actually say, you know, if that's not a local appraisal, and that you know, they, can, right. they can actually yeah, deny that's it. that's called geographic competency. Okay. So... As a realtor, you would want to qualify, you get that appraisal, you don't recognize their name. You'd want to qualify with them some questions. Do you have our data? Are you on our MLS? Right. Uh, how often do you come to this area? If you don't like what you hear, uh -huh. then you have every right to call the lender and yeah. tell them that right. uh, this appraiser is not geographic, geographically competent. Well, they wouldn't have access to our properties. They, and they, they, don't, they don't have access to our lock boxes either. So, and then, well, yeah, and they don't know the, the niches. Time, yes, you know, that, absolutely. Like, most of the time, you're going to kind of know if they ask you for your MLS data, if they ask you for mm -hmm. comps. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know they're going to want meet you there because they have no access to right. to the system. Um, then that should be a red flag. So um, with all the current overbidding that's happening in the market, I'm sure you're seeing situations there with properties maybe not appraising, but then also properties that are appraising. Do you see pretty much a balance of that happening? Well, boy, that every property is so different. <laughs> um, I'll tell you the interesting thing, uh, when COVID hit, um, appraisers were fully expecting a downturn in the market. And, um, you know, I, I even went so far as to, you know, go get out my old notes and, you know, how do we, how do we talk about the decline? And, and boy, did we, were we wrong about that? Um, wow. Didn't happen, as we know. Yeah, a short period um, of time where they regrouped, where... It, it was just, it was so, sh you can't even measure it. So now here we are, you know, the market is interest rate driven. Interest rates are fantastic. Um, as far as the properties that, um, oh, there, there's a term that uh, if you're over, <laughs> on those properties that don't make value, um, here's, here's a scenario that's happening a lot in our market. Okay. Um, properties listed for 400000 you go into that neighborhood, a buyer who wants to capitalize on that great interest rate might only have two or three properties to look at. So, and they're not the only ones. So now the bidding starts, um, then the overbids. Um, as a realtor, all you can do is, is ride that market. Um, the problem lies when it comes, it comes to the appraiser. Um, because he's still going to appraise it using the same process. Right. Now, there are, there are time adjustments. There are ways to measure them. Every market is so different, and every price range within a neighborhood is Yes. So okay, different. so that's yes. right. Um, that mm -hmm. I definitely don't have a, a fixed. Um, the MLS will give you maybe um, the Northwest, Northeast Santa Maria, but I try to break up my market segments even smaller than that and try to make them um, what's comparable to what I'm appraising. Okay. And then I'll do trend graphs. I'll do a 12-month history mm -hmm. to, give me a, to give me a trend graph to see where, what's been going on, where's the market been. And then the supply and demand, the inventory is going to show me going forward, you know, what's, what's an indication of where we might be going. Um, now, some of that's the unknown. Um, those listings are, are great to have. They're very, there's very few of them right now. Um, so when you, are you, it doesn't help to go back further, though. It doesn't it, help. That's it, my at argument. All. It, you know? Right. And that, that was my argument. Be, prior to 2009, I used to prioritize supply and demand. 
what is the buyer looking at right. today? Because it doesn't really matter what to that buyer, what sold three months ago. Um, but the lending, the secondary money, money market, this is the way they want these. They definitely want a history in every appraisal. Um, you're telling a story. You're, yeah, exactly. You're giving the history, mm -hmm. but I think, and, I, and I, I'm probably just as guilty as this is, as a lot, I think the appraisal profession might miss out on the impact of supply and demand with the inventory. Um, so I try to use a lot of comment, a lot of narrative about the inventory. Um, if I can prove a time adjustment with my trend graphs, okay. Um, but even then, the inventory and the consideration of it would give me um, a reasonable, um, not excuse, but reason to put that property at the highest of the indicated value range that you end up with. So, but then you're also going out there, you're going to look at the condition of the property and what type of upgrades that homeowner has made. And you're looking at all of those factors I'm, I'm as well. I'm trying to look at the whole package. Right, whole I'm looking at condition, quality, um, and you know, it's effective age. Um, I, I appraised a house the other day that was built in 1963. Uh -huh. I take the interior pictures and I show that to my wife and ask her how old it is. This place looked brand new. Right. So now we've got effective age working in this as well. Um, so actual age, you know, once on these older homes, once they start getting pretty heavily updated, doesn't mean as much. Uh -huh. I don't think it does to the buyer. Um, from what I've seen when I pair these sales together, um, buyers will readily buy an older house uh, with the right kind of updating and remodeling. Yeah. So now, as far as when you talk about remodeling, et cetera, like, are you given a certain range that you can give value to, say, an updated kitchen versus a house uh, an that original doesn't... kitchen? An oh, original that's kitchen. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a very good question because everything that goes into an appraisal it has to be market derived. So we have to pull that from the market. So as we said earlier, every neighborhood is different. Every price range within that neighborhood is different. So I think it is the most credible to pull the value from what we call paired sales analysis. So we're gonna take a grouping of sales in that neighborhood that have been remodeled, okay. and then we're gonna take a grouping of sales that have not been remodeled and then we're going to pair those up and that should start to give us a clue as to what is the market telling us and it can vary widely um, between neighborhoods which is why you don't want to get caught over improving your property in some of these neighborhoods the market's not going to appreciate it so uh, that i think is is the best route i think that's the best we can do um, as an appraiser to, to try to d pull that from the market. Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't keep a set of, you know, um, kitchen remodels worth X, bathrooms remodels worth okay. X. Um, and the one thing I would probably be a good time to point out, cost doesn't always equal value. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to pull these, glean these things from the market. And it, 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 it's a process because every appraisal, if you, every appraisal is going to be different in every neighborhood and every market area and every price range. Yeah. It's going to, it's, it's going to be different. But typically your uh, kitchens and baths, those are where you'll get your money back, right? When you're, that, when a well, homeowner. I don't know about money back because no. it depends on how you, how you do materials for those. Well, let's say that they do instead of like a, just a, a, a um, fiberglass shower, they do a tile shower, a nice vanity. Those are, those are, cost-effective improvements, right? And those would be quality items. Right, so you would um, note that? Like so quality is another line item adjustment in the report. Okay. Um, let me read you, I, um, this is an addendum that we use in, in uh, FHA VA okay. conventional reports. Nowadays, uh, everything goes through computers, so they wanted to codify all this. So everything is code. When you, people get their appraisal and they'll call me and, you know, if I'm allowed to talk to them, what's a C3? What, what, what are you? 
So this is what, you know, the secondary market, this is how they keep track of every property now. Okay. And just to give you a few examples, a, a, a condition rating, a C1, is a brand new house never been lived in. Okay. Um, most of these will fall into um, a C3. It says the improvements are well maintained and feature limited physical de depreciation due to normal wear and tear. Some components, but not every major building component, may be updated or recently rehabilitated. The structure has been well maintained. Mm -hmm. So to me, that kind of seems to be what we used to call good condition. We've had this discussion before, you we and I, have. and you always said that you wanted realtors to put it, have those conditions and put it in the comments so that you knew what, <laughs> what it was, what it was, was yeah, I beforehand. Like, I would like their opinions of it. Because we rely, you guys are the first ones in. Yep. And the market should not be decided by real estate appraisers. The market is decided over kitchen tables, living room tables, where you guys are going back and forth over off. That is right. the market. Um, sometimes, uh, you, sometimes some of your offers may outperform what the market can, can handle. And, and we are seeing a certain amount of that right now. Right. Yeah. Um, but even then, when you look at the at that market analysis that you guys do, you know that that top third is the, is the inventory. Well, that's where buyers are living today. Mm -hmm. The bottom third is where the appraiser is going right. to bet the ranch on because that's a done deal, close sale. So most of the time, there's there's a lot of sales going on right now. Um, so we try to stay very recent and very similar. Mm -hmm. um, if we start using those older sales that might be a time to start considering a, a, what we'd call a time adjustment. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. All right. And you do, you do FHA, VA appraisals? And conventional. And conventional. I do a lot of private work also, attorneys, accountants, trusts, divorces, oh, that right. kind. I think everybody, everybody in this area, we're all pretty well, pretty well rounded. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, anything else? Um, so what about just the fact that if the property is clean? Yeah. Well, I, clean is a... Uh, like is well a, is, a, is well, a very gray? It's, it's a, it, well, let me... What I would call clean and what my wife would call clean, <laughs> you know, it, it can be a little subjective. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if we, if we go back to um, the definitions... We've got one that says well-maintained, um, and then the next one down talks about it being adequately maintained, mm -hmm. which would be kind of what we used to call average condition. Mm -hmm. um, I think the well-maintained house is probably clean. clean. Um, but if we're talking about the kind of cleaning that only takes just a few minutes to kind of pick up, you know, it's not a housekeeping appraisal. Um, so I look at more... I would probably have to even really get down and dirty on what clean is um, and get my wife to agree with me. And that's probably never going to happen. So um, not as much as what well, maybe the word maintained. Maintained. Yeah. And I, our, that word is used quite often. Well-maintained home, and especially if it's yeah. not upgraded, but it's yeah. been, you know, what is there has been taken care of. But I think there's no doubt that the clean home shows you know, shows very well. Well, let's face it though, just with painting, Paint. it makes a huge difference. Oh, no Painting doubt is it. like yeah. the no biggest doubt about it. I think bang for your buck, I think. It is. You can't yeah. go wrong with painting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think... An, I, Neutral I, colors. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> the that's, pink. That's no pink. No purple. <laughs> um, I think flooring. Yes. I think anything under the column of deferred maintenance right. uh, is important. You know, if, if, you, if you just take a walk around your house, around the outside, around the inside, yes. what are you seeing? Is, is, it, is the paint faded? Um, is the roofing, in you know, right. deferred maintenance items, take care of those first. Okay. Uh, outdated appliances um, are, are worth, you know, worth replacing. Okay. That's a little challenging right now. Of course, they did just get some appliances in at Home Depot. I was looking for oh, a dishwasher. I uh, oh. A couple weeks ago, and I, I couldn't believe how di difficult it was. Really, I just bought a stove and a uh, a dryer, like well, on just picked it right up. Yeah, uh, they just got a shipment in. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had to wait two weeks for a dishwasher. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I did okay. not know that. The, it okay. was sitting on a ship out in the ocean. <laughs> oh, wow. Me. Well, th those are items that I think the market can appreciate. Um, and some remodel, I mean, if your countertops are worn out, your cabinets are just done, you need to do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe that falls under maintenance again. Right. Um, but, you know, painting, staining, um, if you're getting a house ready to put on the market, you really need to take care of the deferred maintenance. Right. Mm -hmm. Having said that, when people call me and ask me to come take a look around their house, I usually send them to a realtor. Um, oh. I do, because I don't want them to have to pay me for that. If they're thinking about listing it anyway, right. why shouldn't the realtor, it, you know, they, they can meet some realtors that way. Yeah. But I think a good realtor who's been doing this for a while, a uh, great source of information. Yes, yes. That was very good. Is there any other things that you'd like to share about the whole appraisal process? You know, probably, maybe just because a lot of things that have happened recently, <laughs> But keep in mind that the appraiser's client is the lender. Right. The buyer pays for the appraisal, right. but the buyer is not their client. The so having said that, keep that in mind. I would definitely say choose your lenders wisely. That's a good okay. point. Um, yep. You know, stay with local, reputable. I know that we're living in an age of online and everything is but I just think you'd go a long ways towards staying with local reputable people um, who you can actually walk into their office if you need to. I encourage my yeah, clients to so do that I. because yeah. we all have working relationships with yeah. local people. Well, I work, I work for the broad spectrum. Yes. And I'm here to tell you that um, the local people, there's much less chance of things falling through the ground. Right. Well, and we all kind of knew have a system, how we work together. Sure. We know what to expect right. from one another. And when, so it, it, it just, it's harmonious that way. But right. yeah. yeah, so thank you for that. Yeah. And well, um, gosh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. No problem. Talking with really you. Really enjoy it. Thank you so much. Good yeah. to see you guys again. Nice yeah, to yeah, see yeah. you. Yeah. And if you have any other questions, um, please leave a little comment section uh, for Miko or I. And um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Bye.